Hello, everybody. I am so happy that you chose to join us once again for our Bible study. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, we come once again to study your, study your word. And Father, we ask as always that you would open our hearts and our minds to receive you afresh. We thank you and we love you in Jesus name. Amen. So if you remember uh, from last week, we have started article number 12 the harmony of the law and the gospel. And our author writes, we believe that the law of God is the eternal and unchangeable rule of his moral government, that it is holy, just, and good, and that the inability which the scripture ascribes to fallen men to fulfill its precepts arises entirely from their love of sin. To deliver them from which and to restore them through a mediator to unfeigned obedience to the holy law is one great end of the gospel and of the means of grace connected with the establishment of the visible church. And so uh, this week, well, last week, if you remember, we went through exactly what the author was saying. And so this week, we have several scriptures that we will be using as our main scripture. The first one is Romans, the third chapter, verse 31, and this is the NIV version, says, Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. And then Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse 17, and again the NIV, it says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come to, I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. And then we have Romans, the third chapter, verse 20, uh, again, the NIV. It says, therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. And finally, Romans, the fourth chapter, verses 14 and 15. And again, NIV, and it reads, For if those who live by the law are heirs, faith has no value, and the promise is worthless. Because law brings wrath, and where there is no law, there is no transgression. And so this week, we're going to uh, continue our good news, bad news analysis uh, from last week. Uh, when someone tells you that, you know, that they have some good news and some bad news, it's normal to hope that the good news is so good that it will make the bad news not so bad. Well, I found another good news, bad news story for this week's lesson. It says, the lawyer had a criminal client who was charged with a brutal murder. The lawyer got the blood test back from the lab and told his client, I have some bad news and some good news. The client nervously asks, what is the bad news? The lawyer said, well, they did the blood test and your DNA was found all over the crime scene. Oh no, the client said, I'm ruined. What's the good news? The lawyer says, your cholesterol is down to 130. Well, this one didn't crack me up like the one last week, but it gets the point across. The blood test had some bad news and it has some good news. But the bad news was so bad that it overshadowed the good news. Everywhere in the Bible, there is some bad news and some good news. This bad news, good news theme runs parallel throughout the entire scripture. And since the Bible deals with eternity, the bad news is really really bad and the good news is really really good the good news for believers 
is that the bad news is only for unbelievers. The bad news for unbelievers is that the is that the bad news is the worst news possible. It's the kind of news that you get uh, when the phone rings in the wee hours of the morning and a family member is crying on the other end of the phone. You instinctively know that is not going to be good news. You, you, you already know that in that scenario that is going to be very bad news. The law is like that phone call, calling sinners, giving them the dreaded news that the soul that sent it, it shall die. That is very bad news for sinners. That is condemnation, it, it, it's loss, it's ruin. And that is the universal message of the law of God. It, it's a message for, for, for everybody that, that is under the law. There's no mercy. There's no rescue. The law comes strictly to condemn. That's what it does. Romans 3 and 20, the NIV says, Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. One of the purposes of the law is to bring us to repentance. It, it, the law makes us aware of our sins. An understanding of the law makes it easier to explain sin. Without the law, sin cannot be known. Through the law, we become conscious of sin. If sin is not known, then the need for Jesus is not felt. In our witnessing to sinners, we must mention the law. Simply asking them if, if, if they have ever sinned is a good place to start. You, you may be surprised to learn that most people do not see themselves as lawbreakers. I think most people think like, like I used to and probably like you used to before you were saved. Uh, that, you know, I, I didn't think I was that bad. I mean, I thought I was a decent person. It, it, was, it was the law of God that showed me that being good enough really wasn't good enough. Galatians 3 and 24 NIV says, so the law was put in charge to lead us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. The King James Version says that the law was our schoolmaster. It is through the law that we see that our attempts to keep the law which is our works, it's, it's insufficient to gain eternal life. We are not good enough to be worthy of God's favor. We can't be good enough to be worthy of God's favor. We as people tend to think that because we are not that bad, that should be enough for us to be with God when we die. But God's law reveals that no matter how sincere, sincere we are, uh, and no matter how we're not that bad, it's not good enough. God requires perfection. And the law points out that any, any, any little bit, any tiny bit, any little smidgen of lying, of cheating, of stealing, of lusting, of not honoring God. And the list can go on and on and on. The law points out that no matter how minor it is, it is sin. The law is peculiar. The law says, be holy then it shows us that we're not. It, it tells us, do not lie. 
then it shows us where we do. It says that we should honor the Lord your God. And then the law turns around and shows us where we fail to do so. So the law speaks to all who are under the law. And it has nothing but bad news. The law says, sinner, you are guilty. And I cannot justify you. There is no good news for the sinner in the law. The only news is bad news. And it's not just bad news, but very bad news. The law is a, a difficult taskmaster. It requires that we maintain a perfect standard of moral behavior. And that if we shall fail at any point, the law condemns us to death. You know, we're used to, we're, we're used to, you know, back when I was in school, the teacher would grade on a curve, which means, or she would ask us, especially in long math problems, she would say, show your work. And, and so as you detailed your work out, she could look and see where you went wrong and give you points for that that you got right. But the law is not like that. The law, it, 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 if we fail in any, at any point, it doesn't matter how much good we've done. If we fail at any point, the law condemns us to death. There is no middle ground. It's an all or nothing scenario. And, and when you consider our bent to sin, there's no winners. Romans 3 and 23 says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So since none of us can keep the law, we are all under condemnation. Without, without help, without a rescue plan, without salvation, we are all under condemnation. Now one thing that, that uh, we must point out is that is this bad news situation or the thing that we must point out in this bad news situation is that the bad news that the law of God brings to all sinners it's not the fault of the law but the fault of the sinner why because the law leads us to the gospel it, when the law shows us uh, that we are guilty then it leads us to the gospel and the gospel delivers us by grace first we have to know we're guilty kind of like the alcoholic anonymous you know first you have to admit that you're an alcoholic so first we have to admit that we are guilty and and, and the law helps us do that that's what the law does. Then after recognizing our guilt, it causes us to recognize our need for a savior. And then we ask for forgiveness and that brings the gospel. So the law kills, but the gospel makes alive. When Moses came down the mountain, after receiving the law and saw that the Israelites, oh folk were down there doing some everything. They had fallen into idolatry. They had built the golden calf and was worshiping it and just, just being, just doing all kinds of things. Moses threw the tablets down. He, he, the tablets had the law on them. So Moses in essence threw the law down and that day, 3,000 died that very day. In the New Testament, after the resurrection and Peter preached the gospel, 3,000 were saved. So, so because of the law, 3,000 died. But because of the gospel, 3,000 were saved. 
God gave the law through Moses in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, God gave the gospel through Jesus Christ. It is the message of salvation by grace through the sacrificial death and the physical resurrection of Jesus for our sins. In Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse 17, the NIV, Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. And so Jesus made it clear that he had come to honor the law and help God's people love it, learn it, and live it. But it was in his death and resurrection that Jesus especially fulfilled the law. Jesus didn't, uh, he did not destroy the law by fighting it. He destroyed it by fulfilling it. In order for a man to receive the good news of the gospel and, and, and for the honor of the law to be maintained, it was necessary for the Son of God to offer himself as a sacrifice for sin. He who knew no sin became sin for us. He died for us on Calvary. And his death shows us just how much God loves us. And it shows the unchanging nature of the law that he didn't do away with the law. He fulfilled the law. Well, loved ones, that is all that I have for today. Join us again next week as we continue to study the harmony of the law and the gospel. Until then, bye-bye.